Hello everyone, today we're going to look at the stack data structure, both in the linked list format, which is the classic format, and also in a dynamic array, which is what you would use in a production application. Whether you're new to Odin or just wanting to sharpen up on your data structure skills, I think this video will be a great one for you. If you're new here, I'd appreciate it if you'd tap the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. A stack is a linear data structure. It's usually referred to as a LIFO data structure, meaning last in, first out. Alternatively, some people might call it philo, first in, last out, but that's a lot less common. The stack is just like a stack of books. You can set a book on top of the stack or you can take the top book off the stack, but you can't really go rummage around and say the 10th book down. Some common places that you'll see stacks used day to day are undo redo stacks in an editor, the browser history, some algorithms you'll see it used for are the shunting yard algorithm, which takes an infix notation like math equation and converts it to postfix or reverse Polish notation. Another one you would use it for is a depth first search for traversal of graphs. If you didn't see my video on linked lists, I'll place a card up in the top and you can go check that out because we're going to be using some of the functions that we developed in that video. With that, let's get on to the editor. Starting out, we're just going to sketch how a stack works real quick. So first we're going to push A onto the stack. Next we'll push B onto the stack. Then we'll pop B off of the stack since it's on top. Last we'll pop A since it's on the bottom of the stack. Notice that the stack is now in reverse order. A, B, B, A. Never thought it'd be so easy to be a dancing queen, did you? All right, onto the code. We'll start by importing all of the methods from our singly linked list. Then we'll create a generic struct that has the type ID that we want to contain. We'll use a head pointer, who's the head of the list, a free list pointer to carry who are unused nodes, and then the allocator that we'll use to allocate and deallocate those nodes on. We'll then make a make stack function just as a convenience that we'll be able to initialize the stack with a preset number of values. And we do this just so that we get memory locality. If we didn't do this, the nodes might be in various places. And in, in so doing, if we know roughly the size of the stack, we can make sure everything is actually adjacent to each other. Next, we'll destroy the stack. So we want to be able to destroy both the head and the free list. After that, we'll do push. And for push, we first see if we can get something from the free list. And if we can, that becomes our node to choose. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and allocate something new. If we fail to allocate, we go ahead and return that we did not succeed. Once we have the assigned value, we go ahead and set it and then put it at the head of the list and say that we have successfully inserted the item. Pop, we similarly remove the head of the list and put whatever was behind it as the new head. We then check if it was empty. And if it was, we say we failed. Otherwise, we go ahead and return the value. Peak is done almost the same. Now we'll make an example where we initialize a stack with no values in it for now. We go ahead and push a few values onto the stack, and then we'll drain it out by doing for each value in pop. Lastly, we'll destroy the stack. And as you can see, it printed out, and at one moment too much, and also just not enough. Next, we'll make an explicit stack. Normally, you just use a dynamic list, but let's say hypothetically you wanted to constrain or be highly explicit about what you want to do. So in our case, a stack can be allocated, push, pop, and destroy, and has no other functionality, which is less than the dynamic, dynamic array list would have. So we can just wrap the dynamic type into a struct and give it a type to pass through onto the dynamic. From there, we're just wrapping the delete for destroy. Push gives us append, pop, and peak both return the pop and peak internally. However, we have a name collision, and so we need to import the built-in and be explicit about what namespace we're acting on. Lastly, we go ahead and make an example. And as you can see, we can make 84 and 42 and zero go just fine. And again, they're in the opposite order of when they were put in. So that's it for stacks. They're very straightforward. They're extremely useful. When you need a stack, you really need one. And we'll see you next time for queues.